Thank you. Uh, as Matt may uh, introduce me, and uh, I started Ruby in 30, uh, 30 years ago. So, the, yeah, 30 years. Uh, and then, okay, I'm going to tell you about the lessons from 30 years of history of Ruby. Uh, the 1993, February 24th, the I named Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> uh, so the, I was talking with my friend with my new project because I'm at that time I'm kind of bored. So the, <laughs> I started my pet project, and then detail will be uh, talk explained later. And uh, and I, for the new project to create my own programming language, so that we need some kind of the code name. So the, I talked with my friend. And then the candidates will be Ruby, Coral, and Tish. Tish papers? <laughs> and then in, in the discussion, so the, my colleague, uh, my friend, uh, pr proposed to name new language with a dual name because we had Paul. So the Tish was dropped, luckily. <laughs> if I made a mistake, uh, we we were now attending the Tish conference. <laughs> not 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 attractive at all. So the the less uh, the remaining candidates are Rubin and Coral. And uh, I was thinking about the name, and uh, the Ruby was more beautiful and uh, more expensive. And shorter, so that I picked the name Ruby, and then I believe that is the greatest choice in my life. Yeah, so the lesson: <laughs> choose good names for your project, uh, your company, uh, your service, or maybe uh, your new function or variables. Uh, the naming is important because software does not have any physical entity. So that it's kind of virtual stuff. So that uh, the software is the entity of concepts. So that we have to uh, name it properly to handle. So that we, we have to think in the languages, I mean the native language, English, Japanese, uh, Thai, or any other language, so that uh, we have to represent that concept, vague concept in my mind, in the, the term, the name, so that we, when you start your, your new project, uh, you have to choose the good name. Uh, that, the definition of good is very varies for each entity. For example, a Ruby is nothing related to the programming language, but it's since it's beautiful and attractive, the project was succeeded. And maybe you may name your project in, say, fantastic language like Japanese like Kaminari, or Nokogiri, or Umami, or something like that. <laughs> but that's okay if it works. Proper naming has power, and the pro uh, proper naming determines the fate of the, uh, the language, the software, and the uh, project. So that's the lesson. The naming is pretty much important. The okay. That I was often asked by the people, why did you create Ruby? It's just for fun. It, it started as a hobby project. Uh, when I was in high school, I, was, I had a dream to create my own programming language. Uh, because uh, when I started programming in age 15, and uh, 
the programming language was basic. Not the visual basic, but the basic. Uh, especially my uh, first computer is some kind of the, this, this size of the pocket computer, and the basic was pretty much limited. And, uh, it was the only global variable as well, no local variables, and uh, all variables has length of one. That means that you only have the 26 global variables in the whole program. And uh, that's just kind of limitation and uh, frustrated me. But uh, I, don't, I didn't know anything but basic. So that it was, I felt like, a, okay, programming is kind of difficult and frustrating. But uh, in the other aspect, you know, it's, fun at the same time. So that, okay, cool. okay, programming is fun, but at the same time, it's frustrated. But the, the basic was pretty much limited, but uh, I've, soon after that, I found other programming languages, like uh, C, Pascal, Lisp, Smalltalk. And then uh, I found out that using the other more advanced or more powerful programming languages, uh, programming can be much, much easier and, uh, and uh, more, more enjoyable. So the, I was interested in programming language in general. So that I seek for the new programming languages and the new features that helps the pro programmers. And uh, then I found out uh, every programming language had a creator. So that, you know, unlike natural language, like Japanese, English, Thai, so that someone, the particular person, invented programming language. So that the astonishing idea came into my mind, the high school me. Uh, why can't I create my own programming language? And then, I had a love of programming and a love of programming languages and a love of psychology, like a how I feel when I when we program in the particular language. And connecting these dots made into the idea of creating the language. But unfortunately, it's a early 80s. So we didn't have internet. The only books and the magazines are uh, the information I can get. So that uh, I got the I got the book uh, titled Compiler, but uh, it's a textbook for the university, and it's too difficult for me. And uh, but uh, I entered into the university and majored in computer science and I learned about the many of the the, the programming languages, the algorithm, the, the the programming language itself, how to um, implement the programming languages. And then they graduated from the university. I, I became a professional programmer. And then the, with the, that kind of internal impulse made me work for Ruby for last 30 years. But that, that kind of the, you know, the passion made me work for that keeping me work for the Ruby for 30 years. So the second lesson is motivation matters. Motivation matters. Drive by your motivation. Ah, the third lesson. In 1993, I, I, I just told you I started, uh, I started creating Ruby. And at uh, the time, the end, in Japan, we suffered the end of the bubble economy. So that we had a serious economical depression at the time. So that I was working as a programmer, the professional programmer, and my project was canceled because of the, you know, the economical situation. So that uh, my project was canceled, but luckily I didn't, I, I, I wasn't fired. So that, but, uh, I became uh, some kind of the main maintainer of the existing project we created. And then, uh, you know, I was bored. 
<laughs> and new new development was prohibited, so that I can only you know the, get the the call from the the customers and uh, okay, uh, your so uh, your software is not pro properly working, and I replied, okay, uh, turn off your computer. <laughs> <laughs> then reboot. Uh, we got that kind of a call probably uh, once in uh, two days or three days or something like that. I was bored. But luckily, I wasn't, uh, that my computer was, wasn't taken away. So that I had a computer on my desk. And uh, my manager was looking for the, another project that's uh, making money. So that I was not. Uh, literally supervised, but uh, I started some kind of the skunk work. Then that gradually became Ruby. The famous Grace Hopper, who invented the Cobol language, and she said it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. That I started some kind of the skunk work without telling manager using the company's computer and the company's time. But uh, I, I, I can tell you, uh, the, that company I, I worked for then is, you know, the vanished, actually bankrupt. <laughs> so that I can safely tell you that story. <laughs> uh, this is the third uh, third lesson I learned in the century. Okay, next one. Uh, t about 20 years ago, I was hacking in Ruby, ha hacking Ruby, and tried. I tried inlining C functions in the abstract syntax tree to to uh, make performance better. That's almost. That was almost finished. That, about a one week work, and uh, then I got how this crashed. I lost a week work, terrible. And I, I actually, I abandoned that work so that it was never uh, getting the, the real Ruby. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, we didn't have the version control. You know, it's ancient time. And then, then we moved to the CVS, then Subversion, the then Git. The, the version control matters. But uh, I learned the we we easily lose data. The always version control and the backup. Uh, nearly thirty years ago, I I kept a diary, journals, you know what what I did in every day or something like that in my on my PC. But uh, that hard drive crashed again. I lost all the data, all the journals that uh, uh, more than 20 years ago. And uh, digital data can be easily lost. So that keep backup. Okay, this is a false lesson. Okay. Uh, Twitter, now X, was originally a, a web app in 2000, probably six or something. Uh, and then we had a situation that some famous services uh, moved away from Ruby. Uh, Twitter was one. Uh, Fulu was partially uh, written in Ruby, and uh, Twitch was originally written in uh, Ruby, and Airbnb, uh, uh, part of the Airbnb is written in uh, JRuby, I've heard. But uh, the, most of the part, they moved to uh, Go and Java or something. Anyway, uh, uh, upon this fact, some claims Ruby is dead or something, but I feel different. Uh, every services did not know what their service should be. For example, the Twitter, the original Twitter is a, some kind of a short blog, blogging services. Only we can do a post 140 characters, what, uh, articles, or tweet. And uh, 
we didn't have DM, we didn't have retweet, we didn't have hashtag, we didn't have search, we didn't have anything but 140 characters passed. So the, uh, they tried many things, and uh, some of them failed, some of them uh, are kept, are remained, and then uh, now we have the Twitter, now we see now, and uh, renamed it to X. So that means the very early stage of Twitter, they have to try many things and fail many things. And uh, the, sometimes they pivot. So the important thing is that easy to start, easy to fail, easy to pivot at the very beginning of the product or service. Uh, that means at least at the stage, the productivity is greater uh, matters more than performance. So if uh, Twitter was written in Rails, and then it probably it is harder to for them to try new things and then form uh, that form the current Twitter. Or if you are going to start new services as a startup, the okay. I have some kind of ambition. To get, I, we are going to have the, the million users and the 10,000 access per second or something like that. So the, to prepare that kind of the success, uh, success the, we have to write down our, our services from scratch in the faster programming like C++ as our web services. This is probably that that would lead you to the some kind of the tragedy, because you know the maintaining C plus plus web services for maybe hundred users right now. That's a that's kind of hell. <laughs> and then, okay, if you succeeded, if you have money, and uh, if you if you can hire smart developers uh, as much as you want, okay, then move to whatever language, Go, Rust, uh, C++, whatever. And it, it, it should be tough. It should be difficult. It, it should be, you know, the hard to change. But, uh, you know, now you understand what you are going to provide be, because of the, you know, because you, you have the, the Ruby written services, battle proof. So that, that's the way. So that I don't care which big services moved away from Ruby. But the important things is that Ruby helped them form or design and then fail a earlier flexible. So the trial and error is pretty important. Uh, that is my probably fifth lesson. Did, did you count? <laughs> okay. Uh, the community. Uh, this is the community, the conference. Uh, Ruby is open source software, and uh, many, many open source software rely on the community. Uh, if you don't have community, we don't have Ruby. The, the community is the reason we choose Ruby. Uh, the Ruby core is written by myself at the beginning. Actually, the, we uh, formed some kind of core team, and then the actual coding gradually moved into the team, team effort. But uh, still, I decided every corner of the, the Ruby language design. But uh, the Ruby, the language, is not the best part of the Ruby uh, as a whole. If you don't have Ruby on Rails, so the Ruby, the value of the Ruby will be uh, reduced. You know, the, most of you use Ruby with Ruby on Rails. Yeah, that's okay, but uh, it's, I have to tell you, the Ruby on Rails 
is not designed by me nor my team, but the, the other teams uh, attending the Wales World in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of supporting tools like a RuboCop and uh, some kind of uh, Ruby LSD and uh, some kind of tajet kitting tools and rain tools or many other tools. And uh, those tools are not from us, the core team, but uh, from the community. And uh, we have, oops, we have Ruby gems, and uh, we have so many Ruby Ruby gems. I don't know, ten, ten, ten of tens of thousands of Ruby gems, or maybe more. Now we have. But uh, most of them, almost um, almost all of them, are written by uh, third party from the community. Now, if you want to uh, add uh, some kind of the authentication to the, your uh, your web applications, you have gems. You, if you want to the the paginate paginate your uh, the, some kind of the list from the database, you have pagination gem. And uh, if you have access to the, some kind of the open ID or something, something like that, you have gems. Uh, if you want to access to the chat GPT from the, your application, you have gems. And a uh, lot of gems allow you to create the great things without effort. Uh, that's one of the reasons you choose Ruby, the gems and resources, and then um, the help from the community. The conferences. We have a lot of conferences out there. I don't know. <laughs> I, I stopped counting uh, the Ruby conferences all over the world. And uh, okay, maybe 20 years ago, it's easy to count the Ruby conferences. And then uh, the year 2001, we had uh, the first Ruby conf in Tampa, Florida. And uh, the attendee, not the number of attendees were 37. <laughs> and last 22 years, that we have a lot of improvement. And uh, we, ha we have grown. We have grown uh, up com uh, community. But uh, think about that. What is community? What is community? Uh, just a group of people. I use Ruby. You use Ruby. And uh, individuals use Ruby. But uh, the community is kind of weird things. We have no registration. Okay, did you have any initiation to join the Ruby community? No. We have no vote. So, okay, you you didn't vote for the you know the who maintain Rubies. You know, I'm a dictator. <laughs> no vote. We have no mayor. Yeah, but we have Matt Mayor. Here, there. <laughs> uh, OSS community is kind of virtual community. So that you are community. You are community, but at the same time, individual you are not community. We have no membership, no ex non-exclusive. So you are you can be a member of Ruby community. At the same time, you can be a member of say, TypeScript, or even Python. That's OK. We have no harassment policy. <laughs> so what drives the open source community? Uh, that varies uh, person to person. Some people join the community mostly due to the intellectual curiosity. You know, that's, that's kind of fun. Or Maybe some people uh, join the community for the desire for recognition. Okay, in the Ruby community, if I uh, the release the the this kind of gems, that that make me famous in the community or something like that. Or some people li love the community and they join the community for the communication in the say in the conference or maybe. In, in the chat or or mailing lists or some kind of the other the communication channels. 
And then some people join the community for money. That's important. That if you don't make money, so that we, we, we cannot make the conference available. You know, thank you for the sponsors. The, thank you for making money from Ruby. Uh, some people feel, uh, feel responsibility for the joining uh, the community. But uh, I, I don't recommend that, that kind of reason. Anyway, the, the each community members, each of you have the different reason uh, diff to be a, uh, a, a member of the, the Ruby community. So no uniform mindset. But anyway, we still need community. And as I said before, the Ruby cannot be Ruby without the community. So that, you know, the, the help from the community, contributions from the community is very crucial in Ruby. So that we got get bug reports from the community and the feature requests and over, uh, from Ruby. For example, the Ruby, the Unicode support or the enumerator, which is pretty uh, unique in the Ruby, and the, the many part of the garbage collectors and uh, even JIT compilers, you know, all of them are contributed from the community. So that, you know, I originally created Ruby, but the current Ruby is the technologically uh, significantly improved from the contribution of the community. And uh, we have documents and tutorials all contributed from the community. And we have meetups everywhere. And we have Ruby books, so many Ruby books in many languages, Japanese, English, I don't know about the, the Thai, but uh, in Chinese and uh, French, Russian, and uh, other, other languages, uh, probably the Brazilian Portuguese. And then, you know, we didn't, we didn't write, uh, we didn't write books. And uh, the community members, wrote those books. And the conferences, and the many, many, many conferences right now. And the uh, framework of gems that we, I, I said the, you choose Ruby because of the frameworks, Ruby on Rails, for example, and the many gems, but uh, those are from the community. So, I mean, the Ruby is a language. It's kind of embarrassing to say that, but the Ruby is great. <laughs> but the Ruby, the great language, is just a start. The, the language is the, the very teeny part of the reason of why you choose Ruby. But uh, Ruby, the community, is the value. The, the Ruby, the great language, is the part of the, the reason. But the Ruby, the community, is the reason. So the, the my last lesson is the community matters. And uh, the open source community is kind of weird things because as I said before, uh, the, we have no membership, no initiation, so that we need to feed the community. Otherwise, community members will go away. So that uh, that's kind of sometimes happens in the open source software, so that uh, the, if we didn't uh, feed new interesting things to the community, the, they, will, uh, they will go away. The, and uh, if the community size is uh, decreased, and we will eventually fade away. And uh, we had uh, so many open source software. We can find them many in the, the for example, in the GitHub. And, uh, uh, the many of them are left unmaintained for years because they fail to uh, form the community or they fail to feed the community and the community members are left and they lost the community. They, so, you know, the project was virtually abandoned. That kind of things happens to, could happen in every open source software, including Ruby. So the open source community is kind of like a shock. 
the if it stops swimming, it would die. It would drown. So that we have to keep swimming. Open source software cannot stop. Otherwise, it will die. So that keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward. Uh, we've done great things in the past as a uh, community. The productivity improved. Uh, the, from the day one, the Ruby's productivity is incredible. Yeah. But uh, it has even improved right now. And uh, the performance of the Ruby back then was so so. It's okay to use as a scripting language, but not sufficient for the, the large scale web application. But uh, uh, the performance of the Ruby language has been improved a lot. For example, compared to the Ruby 1.8, available on the year 2000 until 2007, the Ruby 1.9 with the new virtual machine was uh, up to five to 50 times faster. That, that's, a, that's a number. Uh, and uh, Ruby 2.4 are some kind of the new JIT compiler named MJIT. And then Ruby 3.0 has a newer generation of the JIT compiler named YJIT. So that both improved uh, the performance of the, the Ruby significantly. So that we accomplished the goal of the Ruby 3x3, which means the uh, Ruby 3.0 uh, should be three times faster than Ruby 2.0 in some benchmarks. <laughs> Yeah, and then, but uh, the drawbacks are drop, not the drawbacks, but uh, you know, the MJIT, the JIT compiler uh, introduced in the Ruby 2 is uh, so it makes the optical benchmarks, which is the kind of the you know, the hot, hot loop benchmarks, three times faster than compared to the Ruby 2.0. But uh, it didn't make Rails application any faster, unfortunately. And uh, many of you use uh, many of you use Ruby for web application, so that our JIT compiler did not uh, make you benefit. But uh, uh, we added YJIT new JIT compiler, which is much much say smaller and uh, easier to maintain and faster. And uh, which makes Rails applications uh, up to 20 to 30 percent faster. That is wonderful. If you run your uh, real-world Rails application, the 30 percent faster. That means that you have the uh, 30 percent less cost for the servers. You know, for some kind of the large scale applications like a, a Shopify or the many other companies, the thirty percent reduction will be probably I, mean, I don't know I don't know probably uh, more than million dollars million US dollars. Wonderful. Uh, the by Ruby learning curve lowered and we have now great tools and libraries and now we have great community. But uh, we can improve them. Uh, for us, the community, uh, the core community, so that we do everything for the improving the productivity. So we are going to improve the performance even further, and uh, we are uh, working on the improving the concurrency of the Ruby language, and uh, we are adding the code uh, the library to support the code analysis. So that uh, the la tools like a uh, Rubocop or maybe the Steep or many other uh, the code analy analyzing tools can be much much easier to maintain, and uh, to providing those kind of the functionality to the core, so that those supporting tool will be uh, hopefully nourished, and uh, we have even more production uh, productive 
tools for the product productivity. And for you, non-core members, use Ruby in the company. <laughs> and earn money. That's important. Earn money. Earn money. Because, you know, if you don't earn money, so that it's hard for, for how to become, say, sponsors of the conference. <laughs> if you earn money, so that you, you can have more conferences, the more projects, more services, and then more contribution to the core, what gems or whatever. The, uh, the, in the, in this world, money is important. <laughs> Make money. And then uh, hire developers. So that if many people have uh, Ruby jobs, so that some of them uh, choose to uh, the work with Ruby or maybe contribute to the Ruby and improve the Ruby community as a whole. And then uh, participate to the community, like uh, the volunteering to the, uh, the organizing the conferences or maybe uh, organizing the meetups and uh, talk with the new technologies and the improving, improving the, you know, the daily works, the uh, improving the, you know, productivity of the, of, of yourself and uh, contributing, contributing these uh, new ideas as a uh, gems and uh, share your ideas and uh, your tools to the whole community. That would benefit everyone in the Ruby community. And uh, be nice to each other. Uh, it's famous for uh, Ruby community as being nice, so the nice community. So the keep being nice. Uh, contribute to effort, as I told you. Uh, form positive feedback groups. So that, uh, if you feel, uh, if you find something that, the, that can be improved in the Ruby language or other gems, okay, not just criticize it. It's okay to criticize, but uh, we need some kind of constructive criticize. Uh, because, you know, the Ruby is dead is not the, you know, the constructive. <laughs> uh, the one step further. Uh, out of comfort zone, attending more conferences, make a new friend. Okay, you are friends. Uh, try new things, admire others, and then look into the eyes of the the guy who's sitting next to you. <laughs> Shake hands <laughs> and share your ideas. And I share with feelings. Oops, not. Uh, it it will be uh in in Twitter or Facebook or Medium or something like that. It will be a drop of water, but uh, it will form the ocean. Gradually fill the whole earth. We will keep moving forward. We, the core core team, will keep moving forward, and we will lengthen our stride, and we will create values. Then, as a community, you do the same. That's the power of Ruby. Thank you.